Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a Wolfenstein 3D FPS clone in Unity and welcome to episode 22. In this tutorial we're going to add in some score for killing our enemies, uh, we're going to add some fading screens and we're also going to start adding in a little secret area. Don't forget click subscribe and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. And if you've enjoyed this series so far, please feel free to check me out on Patreon or YouTube memberships where you'll earn things like early access, exclusive content, project files and so much more. With that in mind, let's get to work. So we dealt with scoring a little uh, while back, a couple of tutorials ago, uh, for picking up this collectible right here. But what we didn't add in, and realistically we should have done, is being able to kill our enemies and add to our score. So if we go to our scripts and go to our enemies, and we need to I think it's going to be enemy death. So let's go into our enemy death script in Visual Studio. And when it loads up, we need to basically get to this point where we uh, are able to run this bit. So our enemy dies, enemy dead is true, he plays the death animation and the AI is set as inactive. At that point, we then need to add, let's say, 100 points to our score. And it's real simple to do. Real simple. I'm, to be honest, I'm sure most of you have probably already done it anyway at this point. Uh, we just need to have global score dot and it's called score value plus equals 100 semicolon and save and that'll do it so every time we kill an enemy whether it's the first one second one or any more we put in it'll add 100 to our score so let's quickly check that out and make sure it does work fingers crossed so let's pick up our gun some more ammo There we go, and there's a hundred. Let's pick up our gold, and there we go, seven hundred. There's our food as well. So, next what we're going to do is have some fading. So obviously when we start a level we want it to fade in, and when we end a level we want it to fade out. Obviously we don't have the end of the level just yet, but we're still going to create that fading out ready for when we do get to the end. It's very simple to do and it's all done using animation. If we go to game object and go to UI and then go to raw image, this will basically present itself as a little white dot right there. And all we need to do with this is change the color to black or if you want it to fade a different color, red, blue, green, yellow, whatever, you just set it as that color. So I'm gonna stick with the good old fashioned black. And here where we have the anchoring position, we need to select stretch all the way and then zero out each of those and what you'll see is just basically a big black screen and if you were to press play now you, that's all you would see you wouldn't see anything all the gameplay would still happen behind that but you wouldn't be able to see it because of this so if we go to our animations folder and let's actually rename this first so right click rename and let's have this as fade in so fade in means it's fading into the game. So let's now go to animation and let's click on create and let's call this fade in anim, anim being short for animation. And let's click on record. Now we need to establish how long we want the fade to occur. We want it as a second, two seconds, five seconds. Uh, I'm gonna go with Let's go with two seconds. So first keyframe is going to be all about the color. That's the only thing that's going to change on this. So make sure we're on frame zero, 60 frames a second, remember. And let's click on the color. And let's just move the color around and then set it back to black and close off. And all that'll do is set your first keyframe being completely black. So like I said, two seconds, that is frame 120. If you're doing one second, obviously frame 60. If you're doing five seconds, it'd be frame 300. So you're working in multiples of 60. So by the 120th frame, we want the alpha to be zero. In other words, completely see-through. So once that's done, that's fine, that can happen. And then press the record button. Next, if we go back to our project window and click on the fade in anim and just untick loop time. 
And all that will mean is that it'll only play once. So if we press play now, we should be able to see this fade in screen in action. There we go. So if you think that's too slow, obviously you can speed up. If you think it's too fast, you can slow it down just by changing that animation. So on the flip side of that, let's now create a fade out animation. So I'm going to turn off fade in and I'm going to go to game object UI and go to raw image. Do the exact same again, stretch it, zero everything out and set the color to whatever color you want, but set the alpha as zero. What this means is that you'll be able to see it perfectly fine. Then as soon as the fade out comes on, it will start fading to black. So let's rename that to fade out. Click on animation tab, click on create, and then let's have that as fade out anim. And then same again, press record. We're working in 60 frames a second and we need to set that first keyframe. So just move things about a bit and make sure everything here is zero, 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 zero. If it's black or whatever color it's supposed to be, just make sure your alpha here is zero. So once again, establish how quick or slow you want your fade out to occur. Again, I'm gonna go with two seconds. So by the 120th frame, I want my alpha to be completely opaque. That means I can't see through it. Once that's done, press the record button, head back to the project window and click on animation and untick loop time. So at this point I have fade in set off and I have fade out set on. So I'm going to press play now and we should be able to see this screen now fade out. So imagine we've just completed the level. There we go. Faded out. So obviously because we've not got to the end of the level, I'm going to turn that off. But I'm going to turn fade in on. Just to give us that extra effect whenever we test the game, we can see that, yep, it's fading. Perfect. So that will apply to uh, anything. We're not, I'm not going to write a script for it just yet because there's kind of no point writing the script for it now because it's good enough as it is. Once we kind of collate the game together, that's when we can start coding all the little bits here and there which we would need. So next thing we're going to do is create a secret area. And these are common in the old game, if you remember. So I'm going to double click just on the healthful food there, just kind of zoom in to my level a little bit. And I am now going to have a secret area somewhere around here. Uh, let's get rid of this can. I don't think we need quite so many cans here. They're only for testing purposes. So uh, behind here, I'm going to have a bit of a secret area. Uh, what I'm going to put in that secret area, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe just some kind of, I don't know, gold or something. So best thing to do, firstly, is build up your secret area. So in this case, I'm going to have this block slide all the way back eventually. So I need to kind of prep things in place. So if I place that there and have another one. So th that's going to be the back wall. This is the space we're going to be able to walk through. And this space here is where this block will eventually be. So this block here is the base of our secret area. And what we need to do is just kind of build up a little bit more. It's just going to be a very small room, to be honest. That's all I'm going to aim for for now. Obviously, yours can be much more intricate and complicated if you need it to be. So just move things about. Uh, like I say, I'm doing a lot of this just for time more than anything. Uh, so next thing, uh, let's animate this particular cube because that's how we're going to do it. And I'm going to rename it first off and say movable wall 001. And I'm actually going to bring it to the top so we can kind of see it a little bit better. Let's have it just there beneath the soldier. So using the same technique as uh, what we've done with animation before, we can do just that. So let's go to our animation and let's click on create. And this one is going to be, um, let's think, let's think of a good naming convention we can use for this because uh, the levels are classed as floors, aren't they? So let's say floor 001 secret A. I guess you can name this whatever you want, really. It's, it's entirely up to you. So 
we need to press record and then set that first keyframe. Always remember to set that keyframe. Now we're going to be basing this off the uh, X position only. So if we kind of move it and then move it back, it will set that keyframe. Now I want this wall to move back, probably take about five seconds or so to move back. So that's going to be frame 300. So that means by frame 300, we want this wall to be right there. Then press the record button, head back into Unity. And then where we have floor 001, secret A, untick loop time once again. And just for convenience sake, so we can see it working without a script, just for now, until we write that script, I am going to, in fact, let me press play and just make sure. Yeah, it's fine. It should work. Uh, let's turn off the animator. So this wall will remain where it is for now. And let's press play and get to that area. Uh, I want to do this because I don't want to get shot by these guys. There we go. So if you can imagine ourselves being here and we're close enough to the wall, it will animate and move. So then we've now discovered a secret area. So obviously you would just need to build your secret area. Um, you know, <laughs> best way to do it. Obviously you don't want to have a secret area to nothing, which just looks silly. And just quickly do that just so it looks okay. So basically the next thing we need to do is to create a script which will automatically do what we have just done to the door. And to do that, once again, we're using the same kind of mechanics that we've already used. That is the beauty of this style of game and the simplicity of it all. Once you've written this kind of code, you don't really need to write it all over again. You can always stick with what you've got. So all we need to do, I'm kind of going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to use the object that is already here. I'm going to hold control press D to duplicate it. And I'm actually going to rename this to movable wall and we'll call this movable wall trigger 001. Oops, I did not mean to do oh, retype it. Movable wall trigger 001. Uh, I'm going to get rid of the mesh renderer because it doesn't need to be there. Get rid of the animator because we don't need it animated. And make sure we tick is trigger. Let's close up the material there as well. And I'm going to bring it out to just about there, maybe. Maybe out a little bit more. So maybe about there. And let's shrink that down on the scale. So let's have the scale as 0.5, maybe. Bring it to there. Perfect. So once we trigger this, basically it will mean that that wall will start moving. So we need to write the code to do so. So let's head to our scripts folder and the environment. And I'm going to create a new, in fact, you know what? No, let's have in the scripts folder, let's have another folder straight in that in there to say secrets. And in there, right click, create C sharp script. Let's have this as floor 001 A. And obviously this will be secret A. It refers to A, same as what the animation was. So let's open that up in Visual Studio. And all we really need to have here is if we get rid of start and update, all we need to have is void on trigger enter. It doesn't need to be private. And let's have uh, the variable stated as a public game object. And let's state it as a movable wall, semicolon. And within there, we have movable, if I can spell things right, movable wall dot get component and in spiky brackets, animator, open close bracket, dot play, and in brackets and quotes, the name of the animation. And just so you make sure you get this right, head to animations and actually copy the name of the animation. So F2 to rename, copy that animation head back to your code and paste it there. That way you can ensure no errors occur.
After that, this dot game object dot get component spiky brackets box collider open close bracket dot enabled equals false semicolon and save. So now this trigger and the movable wall come hand in hand. They are going to be one uh, actual connection. So let me bring them together so they kind of stay together. So movable wall 001 and the trigger for it. Now we just need to attach the script we wrote. So in secrets, floor 001A onto there and drag and drop movable wall 001 onto there. And before I do it, let me actually just kind of bring the ceiling over a little bit. And I don't like it being so exposed. So let's give this a go. We should be able to trigger that secret area ourselves. So far so good. Nope, another glitch. I think we'll need to sort out a bit of a debugging session at some point. So as you, oh, do you know what? I have just thought of that immovable wall Yes, so I was just checking. Um, I th had a quick thought as I turned around there. The movable wall there, it will kind of, uh, it will set it as playing. However, I just kind of thought we need to turn it on. So maybe we should actually change this line of code instead. So instead of having play, let's actually have that as dot enabled equals true semicolon and save so rather than play the animation turn the actual uh, animator on instead and we'll see how that goes that might be a little bit easier actually i should have thought that so yeah uh, i was quickly saying about glitches and bugs uh, we're going to have a quick debug session because this is another one see the gun kind of goes through the wall it's not a glitch per se uh, it's not a bug. Uh, there is a way of getting around that, and so we will be doing that at some point. Oh, he was there we go. So now, if we go here, this should move. And there's our secret area. Perfect. So you can have as many of these or as few of them in your floor or level, whatever you want to call it, as you want. It's entirely up to you. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit more UI, I think. Because uh, at the moment, uh, we are slowly building up our UI at the bottom, but we're missing a couple of things. There's no um, weapons and there's no face here. So... I think we'll kind of go uh, for that and add that in. Uh, I'm also thinking about, um, let's see, what else do we need to do? Oh, keys. So let's start working on keys and locked doors as well, because that will become uh, quite useful for us later on. So we'll kind of focus on that next tutorial. Until then, guys, thank you very much for watching.